Mike Pendleton here with Calf Kick Sports and super excited to talk to my guest today. He is uh, the man in charge, the VP of Fighter Operations for PFL Mina, the one and only Gustavo Firmino. Gustavo, thank you for joining me. This is such a massive time. Business is booming, uh, not just at PFL Mina, but PFL as a whole. But we're obviously here to talk about PFL Mina. First and foremost, how did you get involved with the PFL Mina side? First of all, thanks for having me. A pleasure to be here chatting with you. Um, yeah, the way I got involved um, is because uh, initially I, I used to work in the Middle East. I used to work for uh, another promotion, Brave Combat Federation, for many years. So I lived in Bahrain. I uh, know the region really well, you know, the fighters, the, um, uh, the gyms. So when the conversations started about PFL Mina, um, then uh, I had contact with PFL, and then um, yeah, things just worked out that they uh, they selected me uh, for this uh, for this job. That is uh, you know incredible to uh, start a league in, in a region with so much talent. It's been yeah, it's been a great experience, and um, uh, now we are getting ready for our second event. That's a big term that people who are unfamiliar with the PFL. They, they skip over that, right? League. And obviously, I'm rocking a PFL hat today for this interview. Not to play kiss up, but because I'm a big believer in all that the PFL is doing. And, and there's so much importance. There's a lot of PFL kind of intricate things I want to talk about today. And, and one being the term league, right? Because you have the Global League. You have the PFL Europe League. Now you have PFL MENA League. We're talking on the day that PFL Africa was announced for 2025. These leagues are massively important, but people have to understand what they are. So from a breakdown of your perspective, for people to get familiar with just PFL MENA, how would you inform the fans about what they need to know for PFL MENA? Right. So, and, and last year, obviously, we launched the PFL Europe as well. So PFL, as um, uh, people have already uh, seen, uh, our uh, CEO uh, and our chairman, uh, Don Davis and, and Pete Murray, talking about uh, in the media, uh, the, the vision is to create the Champions League of MMA. And uh, the roadmap to do that is to establish these regional leagues. Uh, so in Europe, uh, this year we are launching in the Middle East and North Africa, so the uh, MENA region. Next year, we just announced Africa and so on. Uh, we have Africa on the way, uh, Latin America and Asia as well. So the idea is to create a league with the best fighters in the region uh, to develop the, uh, the talent, create regional stars, and then uh, the fighters, uh, the best fighters, moving into a global league. So it's a it's a it's a format that is um, you know it's 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 super exciting uh, because we can work on gen uh, creating and developing these stars uh, in the region. Here in PFL Mina specifically that uh, I'm working on, we assembled uh, a roster with uh, the best fighters in the region and the best prospects as well. We have fighters established with um, who, who are champions in regional promotions like uh, Brave, UAE Warriors, and uh, all the promotions. But we also have undefeated fighters uh, such as Mohamed Alakra from uh, welterweight division, for example, who is 5-0, um, is a, a great prospect uh, who is training under uh, uh, Javier Lopez, uh, Javier Mendez, uh, excuse me, from AKA, just finished his camp at Habib's gym in Dagestan, so is a great prospect. So we uh, mixed established fighters and champions in the region, and also those fighters that are, uh, in our opinion, the best talent, the best prospects, to create this uh, very complete skill set wise uh, league to really identify the best fighters in the region. And to that point, this is where I think a lot of people, a lot of fans who are unfamiliar, this is where they miss the point, right? And this is no disrespect to any other promotions out there, but these smaller promotions that may elevate fighters in the past to a place like a Bellator or the UFC or PFL before these international leagues were started, you, you always looked at these certain promotions and most fighters only came from about one, two or three smaller promotions around the world you know we, there's cage warriors there's other promotions that but now the pfl in a sense has their own not only their own leagues but it, it, it's a platform it's a stage for the world to get familiar before they are exposed to the entire world 
And in that process, these fighters are given the opportunity to, to clinch a world title in their respective like PFL Mina League to win a, a cash prize. It's not the million dollar prize that, that the Global League offers, but there's so many small steps that help build these fighters up to what they could accomplish. In the meantime, there these rewards that are given in these leagues in PFL Mina, these are meaningful. So can you talk about a little bit about why success at PFL Mina isn't just big for long term? It's important for right now for these fighters as well. Definitely, you nailed it. It's uh, in the regional league. The prize is one hundred thousand for the winner, which is very meaningful for fighters who are um, uh, usually competing in a regional scene, as you mentioned. And uh, a great example of this uh, this growth through the regional scene, through PFL regional up to the global scene. A good example is uh, uh, Dakota, who obviously won uh, the European uh, tournament last year, the European League, and uh, now she's competing in the, in the global um, in the global uh, season. So um, I think this is uh, uh, me, you know, as a fan before working for PFL, I was watching PFL. It's something that is different from the uh, usual MMA, where you have all the matchmaking and uh, um, and and, and uh, standalone events, if you will. Um, and the one thing in, in, um, that is different is that in in other promotions, the the story never ends. It, it's uh, somebody is a champion. There are going to be new contenders. It keeps going forever. In PFL, you have a, a year where you define who is the best in that division in that region. It potentially goes to the global season, and the next year we start over again with another regional league where we potentially bring new fighters to complete the league. Since others might, might be going to the global season, etc. So um, we have a, 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 a the start and the end of the story in that year. Then it starts uh, over again, and um, it's it's a, it's an incredible platform for these fighters. So they have time to develop into the regional scene fight, fighting uh, opponents that are also training, um, and some of them even already fought. Um, in the past, we have incredible stories in PFL Mina fighters that four or five years ago competed in other uh, local organizations. And now in PFL Mina, you have some storylines where if both of them win the first round, they may compete in the semifinal and it will be a huge uh, storyline. Uh, one example I can mention um, is in the featherweight division, we have uh, Abdul Al Katani, who is uh, the best fighter in Saudi Arabia, he's a, he's a star here. And uh, we have Islam Reda from Egypt, who is 10 and 1. Now it's his 11 and 1. His only loss was against Abdullah Katani at the Brave CF event, I think, five, five years ago. And it was a split decision, a very close fight. So they are placing the separate sides of the brackets. And imagine if they can meet again in the final of PFL Mina, it would be a, a movie. So it's full of these stories in PFL Mina. So we are very excited with uh, the impact is, uh, uh, that is given. Um, in the region and the opportunity and the excitement of the fans. And um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to see this through and uh, which fighter may potentially be going into uh, PFL Global season later on. We will definitely discuss PFL Mina too, which is why, you know, we're here July 12th, that event will take place. But uh, just trying to familiarize fans with all things happening in the PFL, and I think there's no better person to talk to about it than yourself. With, with what you said earlier, you know, the, the storyline never ends in other MMA organizations, right? The one thing you forgot to mention is the social media following, the trash talking, all of that plays a part in other organizations. Sure, it would be fun to have that, but it's even more fun when the very best of the best, these fighters, are creating the fights for themselves. Now, as somebody sitting in the chair with the job that you have, these fighters make your job a bit easier. So it's it's a little different than going, well, they've been talking and he's on a six fight win streak and he's on a nine fight win streak and this fight's gonna sell X amount of tickets. You go, well, this fighter won, you know, and this fighter won, like you said, they're gonna meet on, they're on opposite sides of the bracket. They're gonna meet in the end. When you're putting together fights and when you're putting together these MENA events, how much more fun is it to just book fights for fighters and not for social media followers or the fans or anything like that? Yes, it's, it's, it's indeed very different. We have uh, uh, the work starts on the scouting. We need to uh, find the best fighters 
uh, representing, uh, ju just as an example, the upcoming fight card on July 12th, this Friday, we have, if I'm not mistaken, um, 11 uh, countries represented. Um, I should have no, uh, I should know that on top of my head, but uh, <laughs> we have many nationalities, the whole Middle East um, uh, countries uh, represented. So obviously we're looking for the best fighters in, in, each, of, uh, in each region from each nation. We uh, place them into the brackets in a way that the, uh, it, it flows uh, in a fair way for, for everyone. So the first matchup is, is very well balanced. Both fighters uh, have chance to, to win is as close as possible to a 50-50 matchup. Um, and then some, some fighters that had a past story, for example, we may decide to put them in different sides of the brackets, etc. So there is a logic on, way when, uh, on the way we build those brackets. But after that, it's all about them. So each fighter, uh, each, each fight is very meaningful. Obviously, each fight counts. That's uh, what will dictate if they go to the next phase or not. Um, and and um, and they are going to tell their own stories through through that tournament. It's uh, um, you know it's uh, uh, we don't have any influence on that. It's all about them going to the next phase, and uh, it's a uh, it's a very interesting format. I actually I'm, I'm, I'm as a fan I was enjoying so much to watch. It, for me, the way I would explain is like um, when I when I watch PFL before joining, it's like watching. A Netflix series. In the beginning, I don't know all the, all, 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 um, you know, all, all, all the characters and etc. But then, as the second episode, you know, third episode. So as uh, it goes, I start to know uh, more of uh, about each of them. I think if even for the fan that is not, he doesn't know all the fighters in PFL Mina uh, or PFL uh, a PFL League, let's say, if he watches an event and 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 starts to learn more about these fighters. Then they are going to pick. Oh, I want to cheer for that guy, or, or you know, you 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 start uh, uh, picking which you you you, uh, you like the most. And uh, as the tournament progresses, you're going to learn more about them. So it's a very interesting uh, concept. And then obviously at the end, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to become the champion. Then the next year it starts over again. So it's another season of the um, of, of the series. I personally, I I I love this format. It's more um, it's a more of a sports format. Uh, than the old boxing uh, uh, matchmaking format, if you will. And um, it's going to, you know, I, I'm very excited to see the future when we have all these regional leagues uh, set up and running parallel. And then at the end of the year, what the best fighters going into the global scene to compete. That's going to be incredible. And we are making progress, obviously. I'm very uh, proud to see the announcement of PFL Africa uh, today as well. Yeah, I think it's super easy for, uh, you know, sports fans in America here to, to get with it, right? Because I, I look at like the college basketball tournament, March Madness, right? You're, you're sometimes you're like, oh, I want the 16 seed to win. And it's like a small school of 5,000 kids going up against one of the biggest schools. But there's a story, like there's a narrative there, right? We have fans have the opportunity to watch one instead of getting together for other organizations and in, in MMA and going. So who do you guys like? Oh, okay. I like that guy too. Do you have like a highlight or a, a viral trash talking moment? Okay. I like that guy. You sit down, you watch PFL meeting, you watch PFL Africa in 2025, you watch PFL Europe this year. You have these opportunities to watch that fighter for the first time on a bigger stage and go, oh, I want to follow their career. Now you get to see progression through Mina. You get to see Hey, they need to be on the global stage because I want to see them face so and so, you know. So right. I just feel like it's so simple for fans to get behind this, and, and I'm hoping that conversations with people like yourself further explains it so that everyone can get on board. Because now's the time to get on board. And, and you've talked about your history, uh, you know, in the sport and in the Middle East. And I want to transition as we talk or get ready to talk about uh, this weekend's event. Why is PFL Mina so critically important? to the future of combat sports in the Middle East. Right. Yeah, the combat sports in the Middle East have been growing uh, substantially lately. Uh, obviously, we have other uh, great events here. The, the athletes here, they have a fighting spirit. Um, and what the PFL brings is, uh, is, is, is obviously is, is different. So, so we have a, a, a lot of other smaller organizations, let's say, with their championships, and now what we, we are doing is we are getting the best of all these other organizations, uh, everybody in the region, 
into the same roster and competing in this league format. Um, the the response we've uh, had here in the region from fighters, from uh, the regional media, and um, and and the, the people that are have been in the sport in the region for a long time is incredible. They, they it's the uh, PFL Mina is becoming the ultimate testing ground for uh, the Middle East fighters to see who is going, who is ready to become the ultimate champion in the region to go to that next step. So it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's been incredible. Obviously, we just did our first event, and in our first event, we had uh, so many champions from the regional regional organizations. The matchups were insane. One thing that I've uh, I've been hearing from uh, many people here in the region is Gustav is important. It's impossible to even uh, have picks from these fight cards because they are is all all fights are, are pretty much 50 50 and uh, I said yeah that's that's the intention um, me as a fan I'm, I'm just a fan as well so I I love to see fight cards and and, and matchups when it's pretty much 50 50 and anything can happen I think the uh, that wow effect of uh, something that is uh, unexpected happening in a fight that's why we love MMA and uh, from most, if not all, these fights here, I have no idea how they're going to play out. Um, some fighters, they have such high-level skills in different um, disciplines. We'll give an example. Ami Fazli, who is the current UAE Warriors champion, he's a multiple times Ushu Sunder World champion, so he's a very decorated striker. He goes against Badreddin Diani, who is a Sambo black belt, I think five times African Sambo champion. Uh, two totally different styles. Uh, Badri Dindian is also uh, a former UA Warriors champion. So we have the best of the best in the division. In the opening bout, nobody knows how this is going to play out. So all the fights I can go on and on, but they are all very interesting. And um, um, I think the fans, uh, for the fans in the Middle East, they understand. They already follow these fighters. They know how big it is. But this is the kind of event that somebody from the U.S. or Europe is a treat for them if they watch because the fights are going to be great. I know you've said this is probably the greatest uh, event in, you know, Middle East MMA history, and it's hard to disagree with that, right? And, and I have a few fighters and, you know, a couple topics on the event that I want to ask you about. But uh, when it comes down to it, I'm over here in the States and, you know, getting on board with what the PFL is doing, that all makes sense to me. But as someone who's there in the Middle East, who prides themselves on all that you have done yourself as a competitor himself, as a businessman, as a VP, what does it mean to the eventual fighters on this MENA roster? What will it mean to them? Can you put in the words what it will mean for them to win PFL MENA and represent not only their country, but the Middle East as a whole as a champion? Right. It's um, for all the fighters, uh, I've been speaking to them and we do interviews and uh, they are very proud of their uh, to represent their nation in PFL Mina. And uh, the answer that we uh, normally uh, get when we ask what it would mean for them to compete and to win um, uh, the league is, uh, you know, is the chance for them to raise the flag of their country um, and to represent their country in the best way. It would mean everything for uh, their sports career and for their life. We have uh, fighters here that yesterday I was uh, speaking to one of them. He has been training uh, in combat sports for 25 years. Um, so it's basically his whole life since young he's been uh, com uh, training. So this is the ultimate uh, goal of his life is to win a, a tournament and a title like PFL Mina. So it would mean everything for them. Um, like I said, each fight counts. So this is, uh, as we like to say, win or go home. Um, it's uh, 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 We start the event here, uh, different from the US where we have the, um, we have, uh, the two uh, matchups in the regular season, um, and then they, they score points, then go to the uh, second phase where the playoffs start, and then it's a single elimination. Uh, um, uh, tournament here we already start on the quarterfinals so it's already single elimination uh, matchup we have quarterfinals semifinals finals um, so every fight is very important they obviously know that so that also adds uh, more excitement for the fans because they will give 
everything um, in the in the smart cage to uh, to go out with a win and go to the next phase of the tournament. I know there's a lot of pride with each and every fighter, not only to represent their country, but to represent the Middle East as a whole. Uh, you've spoken about this in other interviews, but is, is, is the Middle East the future, you know, uh, home of, of combat sports? We're seeing it thrive in boxing. We're seeing, obviously, PFL Mina. Do you believe that the Middle East is going to be a hotbed for combat sport, the biggest combat sports events? I think worldwide, uh, I would say that MMA is the most globalized sport everywhere. Anybody loves to watch fights uh, and, and combat sports, and specifically MMA, that is the most exciting form of combat sports. And specifically in the Middle East, they love uh, the fans love it. And uh, what we've seen recently, obviously, uh, with other events as well, um, um, being hosted in the UAE, obviously Bahrain, and uh, now PFL coming to the to Saudi Arabia, uh, with great support from from our partner uh, regional partners here. Um, Saudi uh, uh, is becoming indeed the epicenter for 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 MMA in in, in the world. The uh, the best events are are happening here. Not only MMA but boxing as well. So um, it's incredible the how the sport and combat sports in general is growing in the Middle East. Um, he's specifically in Saudi Arabia, as I mentioned, all these huge events happening here. And um, and definitely, I, I can see that uh, it's going to continue growing, and all these uh, massive events uh, happening here, obviously because of the support uh, that we have uh, from 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 business partners, from government level, but also the fans. If the fans are uh, don't don't uh, don't like this kind of uh, entertainment, obviously there would be. Uh, no reason to bring the events here, but the fans love it. So that's that's also the driver uh, for all these entities to come together and partner up to bring these events here. So um, I am very proud and uh, very grateful for the opportunity. I, I used to live in the Middle East uh, for, for many years and uh, to have this opportunity to be part of working with a great team in PFL to build this, uh, uh, this new league in the PFL Mina and to work in the Middle East to uh, develop the, the sport in the region it's uh, uh, is a is a is a dream job for me so um, yeah I just uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Now Gustavo, this is the first time we're ever talking and then I just have a couple more questions for you. But sometimes I'm a little crazy. Sometimes my brain gets a little crazy and I think of crazy concepts and I and I ask crazy questions. So I'm gonna ask a crazy question. We're, we're talking on the day that PFL <laughs> Africa has been announced to be launched in 2025. We have PFL Mina. We have PFL Europe. PFL Africa coming soon. We have the PFL Global Stage. We know that these international leagues are supposed to be launch pads to the global roster or even Bellator Champion Series. Could you envision a day where the PFL Europe champion is fighting the PFL MENA champion and the PFL MENA champion is fighting the PFL Africa champion? So instead of just having the global roster, we can have the very best in these international leagues fighting each other as well. Everything is possible. They're all part of the same <laughs> uh, company. Uh, they're all part of PFL, obviously. And, um, you know, who knows? Like, uh, uh, um, I think everything is possible. One thing about PFL is that um, we are very flexible, we're very creative, and that we are trying to always to give uh, what we believe is the most exciting for the fans. So a great example about that is in the beginning of this year, we opened the year with a PFL versus Bellator event here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, which was incredible. So that already gives you an idea of the, the type of um, initiatives and type of things that PFL can can come up with. So I wouldn't say that's, uh, that's impossible at all. Listen, it could be a great opener to the Chance vs. Champ series. You have Bellator PFL, then you just have the PFL International Leagues opening up the card. I don't want any credit if you guys do that. I don't want to <laughs> take any credit. <laughs> Uh, but I do want to talk on a more serious note. You guys have some amazing fights, not only just amazing fights, amazing people, amazing fighters representing PFL Mina. And, and one of the biggest ones that stands out to me is really should stand out to the entire world. I don't think she's getting enough co coverage, and that's Hatan. I'll see if, I mean, the first ever Saudi woman signed to a global MMA contract. Talk to me about her impact, not only just 
the viral knockout we saw earlier this year, but just her impact of being part of PFL Mina. Right, yeah. It was incredible how uh, how big she became uh, just after her first amateur fight. And um, obviously, she starts her career with an incredible knockout like that. So Hatani is a very decorated Muay Thai champion, national champion, Arab champion, and world champion in Muay Thai. Um, she's 24 years old, and uh, she um, had the desire to, uh, uh, to start her MMA career. And that's the kind of thing that PFL also does, is to identify these these athletes in the in the beginning of their careers and also give chance uh, and a platform for them to develop. So it's not only about signing the the established uh, champions, but also the prospects and and also to develop and uh, to work with the grassroots uh, development as well. And she's a perfect example of that. She uh, had done after her uh, after her victory. I mean, when she got signed to PFL, it was already huge news in the whole Arab world, specifically in Saudi Arabia. But after that knockout, she she became overnight um, uh, uh, a star here in, in Saudi Arabia. Um, I had the opportunity to walk around with her, uh, and she's she is already stopped uh, all the time to take photos. Or everybody recognize her. She's already somebody that the new generations are looking up to. So it's um, uh, it's incredible to see the um, um, you know an impact that one fighter like Hatan can can do to the whole region and, and to uh, uh, Saudi Arabia specifically, and uh, because of this platform that uh, that PFL provided. So we are looking forward to uh, ident identify more of these uh, 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 talent prospects and uh, continue growing new. Uh, stars in the region. Uh, def definitely, this is part of our goal. For anyone watching this, you know, my message to them is, you know, don't don't come around when Brendan Lockman is putting gashes in people's foreheads in the global season. He, you know, he is someone, and Dakota Dicheva as well, right? Don't come around because Dakota had a successful 2024 regular season. Come around when they're at PFL Europe, PFL Mina. Now, Hatan's a perfect example. And one more on her. What does Hatan having success at PFL Mina mean to the future women from the Middle East who want to either explore PFL Mina or, or whatever it may be? It's incredible. Even trying to explain that is difficult. But um, when she got signed, I remember walking around with her at the hotel. I think it was during the fight week of PFL versus Bellator show. So she had not fought in she had not uh, fought for PFL yet, so she didn't have any M MMA uh, fight. Just walking around with her, and because she became uh, national news, the amount of women that stopped her to ask for a photo and say, "You're an inspiration for this country, for the for the uh, 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 for the women that look uh, they're now looking up to you to become um, um, to do sports and to do specifically uh, potentially combat sports and MMA as well." And after this, after her first fight, that just went exponential. The impact is um, is huge. Um, I went to, uh, before this fight week started, I also trained uh, jiu-jitsu on a regular basis. And I went for, uh, I went to a gym that was an open mat. I went with uh, Al Katani. And I got so impressed when I arrived at the gym in the first floor, there was a huge mat space and the amount of kids training it, the mats were completely packed, and um, those those people they are looking up to uh, the likes of Hassan and Abdul Al Katani uh, because of the impact and and the way they are driving uh, their careers. So it's uh, it's a uh, it's incredible what's happening in the Middle East with uh, these new stars that are being developed through the PFL uh, Mina uh, platform. And uh, yeah, it's just a uh, it, it's incredible to see and be part of that somehow to help create this platform. And uh, I cannot wait to finish this fight week to start already scouting for the new potential stars. I, I'm going to let you finish, get closer to the finish of fight week. I got two last questions here for you. Number one, if it could only be one thing in the world, one thing that you can choose, what do you want the world to know about PFL Mina, this event this weekend, and just all that you guys are doing at PFL Mina? Yes, I think if you like MMA, 
uh, for all the fans out there, if you like to watch good fights, tune in and uh, you're not going to regret. We have uh, the best fighters in the region. We have fighters who are uh, MMA champions in the region, but we also have world champions in other uh, combat sports disciplines. Uh, we have, example, Morsen, who is a five times world champion in Yushu Sanda. He's probably the uh, most decorated striker in the whole uh, roster. Um, and I could go on and on through the through the whole list. Uh, we have uh, Hadi Omar from UAE and uh, Mohamed Alakra uh, from Kuwait. They both train um, at AKA under Javier Mendes and did they, their camp at Habib's Gym in Dagestan. These are incredible uh, undefeated talent that we have uh, uh, in the roster. Just as an example of what this fight card brings. So if, if for the MMA fans out there, if you like good fights, if you like uh, fights that you have no idea what to expect because they're all very strong matchups, make sure to tune in um, July 12th uh, and uh, you're going to witness uh, what is, in my opinion, is the best fight card in the Middle East MMA history. Um, there are incredible fighters in, from all different kinds of skill sets. And um, yeah, I, I personally cannot wait as a fan. And uh, if you like MMA, you should tune in as well. Gustavo, I'm going to end it there because that was put fantastically. Thank you so much for all your time today. It was a pleasure to meet you, a pleasure to talk to you for the first time. Uh, I wish you all the best. I mean, you got me you got me covering PFL Mina here early in the morning from the States, and I'll do it every single time you guys are hosting an event. Uh, I look forward to this event. I applaud you for all that you've done to put this event together, you and everyone behind the scenes. I can't wait for it. I know the talent is special, and uh, I look forward to seeing not only the future stars of PFL Mina, but again, if you want to run with my idea and have the PFL Mina champs take on other international league champs, I'm all for it. But uh, in all seriousness, thank you so much for the time. It was truly an honor to talk to you. Yeah, I appreciate the time. Great talking to you. Thanks for the coverage, for the interest in the um, in other regions, uh, MMA as well. And um, yeah, looking forward to speak with you for uh, potentially the, uh, the next event. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a good one.